Greetings, greetings viewers and subscribers. So in today's journey, we are going to be traveling from downtown Savlamar. You remember that on Christmas Day, we showed you us driving downtown Great Jardy Street and we stopped at the Old Fort downtown. We are going to start this journey at the Old Fort and we are going back up the road on Great Jardy Street. This video, it was shot on Christmas Eve, Friday, December 24th, 2021. Some minutes close to 6 p.m. So, persons were out. So, let's take a view of what Savlamar was like on Christmas Eve. When we reach at the police station, the Savlamar police station, we are going to turn on that side road. And then we are going to go up Beckford Street. So, sit back, relax, and drive with me. Now, today, we have a few reports for you. First up, we are learning that on Christmas Day, Saturday, December 25th, 2021, about 2 o'clock in the early morning, there was a fire at Galloway District in the Betteltown area in the parish of Westmoreland. This fire, it was at a house owned by a lady. Her name is Miss Thompson. She is 45 years old and she's a housekeeper. Now, what happened is that Miss Thompson, she's working somewhere in Montego Bay where she does living job. So she would have left her house. She lived alone. So she would have left her house and was working in Montego Bay. We are told that early Saturday morning, this house made out of board, it was seen on fire. Our information, well, we are not even sure if the fire unit attended to the scene because in quick succession, the house was completely destroyed by fire along with all its contents. We are told that the house and the value of the contents is a little less than 2 million Jamaican dollars. Now, my viewers, my subscribers, the rate now is about 150 Jamaican dollars to 1 US. So if you want to know how much it is in US dollars, just divide 2 million by 150. This is very sad indeed. There are a lot of houses burning down, you know. If you notice, I've been carrying some of them from time to time. There are a lot of houses burning down, flat to the ground. Luckily, no one was at home, so no one was injured in this fire. Now, on this channel, we hardly ever carry sexual offenses. It's not like we are afraid of carrying them, but the reason why we don't carry sexual offenses is that we are protecting the victims. Not the hoodlums or the perpetrators, we are protecting the victims. We as a people, you know, some of us can be very heartless. Some of us can be very, very uncaring. I have seen young girls attacked and sexually assaulted. And you know who some dirty people talk about? The young girl. Them laugh off of them. All kind of things. I have seen, and this is no joke, I have seen a young lady being sexually assaulted. The taxi driver who did it, he was arrested and charged by the police. Now, this young lady, she was leaving work. And this nasty boy held her down with a knife and took what he wanted from her. And would you believe it, that when this dirty boy was held, DNA was taken from him. And this is no joke, you know, this is, this is serious business I'm talking about. DNA was taken from him, because he did not use a condom. He agreed to give his DNA. And when the DNA come back, it shows a 99.9 .9 something match, that yes, he had intercourse with her. And would you believe it, that... He went to court. It's not like his defense was, yes, we did it, but it was consensual. His defense was, it wasn't me. I don't know her. And would you believe it? Would you believe it that even though the DNA matched, 12 jurors, both men and women, from the parish of Westmoreland, found this dirty rapable not guilty? You best believe it. He was found not guilty, even though the DNA matched. Now, here's why I'm talking about this. Young girls and parents, you need to talk to your daughters. You need to talk to them. A lot of young girls are being assaulted. There was an incident last week in Montego Bay. I'm not even going to say the area where it took place. But a female, a little bit over 18 years old, she was dating a young guy and she went 
and met with this young guy. They agreed to meet somewhere at a house. And when she went there, this young guy had three other males with him. They held up this female, took her in a bathroom and had their way with her. Each of them had their way with her. After a little bit over an hour, they allowed her to leave. Our information is that when she was leaving, the one who had the gun was trailing her into some bushes. But she managed to run away. She ran away and found herself in a good Samaritan's house. That good Samaritan called in the police and she was rescued. We don't know why this hoodlum was following her. But he was not following her to go and have prayers with her. We are learning that the quick action of the police led to the arrest of these four young rapables. So they were arrested and charged by the police for one, that sexual offence and two, illegal possession of firearm. So you know what going to happen now? Those four guys, them parents, them parents, they're going to one, find liar money for them and two, they're going to live at Oberman Yard because they're going to knock pan then go and drink what Obama said them to drink. Then go and sprinkle powder. Then go and do all manner of things to ensure that their sons are acquitted. But the moral of the story is, young girls, young girls, be careful. Parents, talk to your daughters. As also talk to your son. Talk to your sons. Tell them not be a part of this crew. Because at the end of the day, you are the ones. We we'll go run up and down and go get liar. I go to Obeman Yard. And let me tell you something. Obia now keep again. Obia, catch cool you now. You think I like me at tell? Ask Ninja Man. If you think I am joking, ask Ninja Man if Obia now catch cool. I will say nothing else than that. Now, in this next story, you remember we carried a story yesterday. Well, we end yesterday's video. Telling you about a man who was taken out. It took place along the Amity Main Road in the parish of Westmoreland. We told you that we were going to try and get this man's name and come back to you. Now, we are learning that this man, his name is Dexter Pinnock. He was 53 years old. He was popularly known as Blasa. Blasa, he was a caretaker for a house at a place named White Road Scheme. Up at Farm Pen or Nardoch in that area in the parish of Westmoreland. Now, what we are learning is that Friday night, Blasa, he was at Waterworks. He was among some persons and he was drinking. Although persons tell him not to go home because it was too late. Because by now, it was about 1 a.m. early Christmas morning. Blasa is somebody like this who is of the view that me not do nobody nothing. So nobody now do me nothing. In other words, Blasa, according to him, he has no enemies. So, he may go home. He rode a bicycle. It is said that Blasa, he left Waterworks about 1 o'clock. Saturday morning, December 25th. Minutes later, the residents of Amity, they heard loud explosions, sounding like gunshots. The police were called in and when they went, they saw a man lying on the sidewalk. A bicycle, suspected to be the one that Blasa left on, was found across the road. So he was taken to the Savlamar Hospital, where he was pronounced D-E-A-D. -E he had received gunshot wounds to his abdomen. Now, we don't know the motive for Blasa's killing. We are still checking. Because, like we said, Blasa not in an argument with nobody. Blasa was simply leaving Waterworks, heading to Nardoch. Is the motive robbery? Because we can tell you, you know, some of these guys now no heart, you know. And some of these guys, they want to make their name in a gang. So, they have to make a dopey to be a part of certain organizations. We are keeping a close watch on this one. And any other information we get, we'll be sharing it with you. Because, Blasa... We are told that he was a hard-working gentleman. Like we tell you, you know, in an argument with nobody. 
So, who is it that wanted Blaster out? Stand by. We are still digging. Now, yesterday, I posted this video. It was about an incident that took place in Lucy. It was a break-in at a laundromat. This laundromat is right across from the JN Bank in Lucy. There was a comment in the comment section. Somebody posted a comment saying, Why did the Lucy police release the footage? And that is why crime can't stop. I responded to the person. How do you know it was the Lucy police who released the footage? And what do you mean by crime can't stop? I went back this morning searching for the comment because I wanted to screenshot it to put it here. But the person deleted it. So that person was questioning, one, why did the Lucy police release the footage? I did not say where I got the footage from. So that person seemed to know more than I. And the person went on to say, that is why crime can't stop. So I wanted to have a conversation with that person as to what I mean. But he deleted it. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And there's a reason why I'm going back to the video. Like we say, over here, so we don't pet and powder criminals. So if you are of the view that exposing criminals, crime can't stop, that are for your business, not ours. I'm not going to say too much because I really wanted the person to respond. But let me get into the video. The PNL detectives are working. <laughs> yeah, man. The PNL detectives are working. We have gotten several WhatsApp messages. These WhatsApp messages are telling us that that thiefing boy that you are seeing on your screen, his name is Alwyn. That is what the messages are saying. The messages went on to say that he's from a place named Q. Now, Q would be when you leave in Lucy. You pass in Johnson Town. Go around that area before you reach the Grand Palladium Hotel. There is where you find Q. So the messages from the PNL detectives are saying that his name is Alwyn and he lives at Q. Persons are also saying that Alwyn don't have to do this. I won't say what type of work his father do. Well, his father works in the tourism industry, but I'm not going to specify the type of work he does. We are told that Alwyn he has been doing this for a long while. He broke into many shops at Q and surrounding areas. So Alwyn, you are wanted by the police. People at Q, you don't know Alwyn, you don't know exactly where he live. We were told where he live. The parents of Alwyn, that is your son. Yeah man, that is your son. He broke into a laundromat at Lucy. He could have lost his life for a few dollars. You need to carry him in to the police. Is wanted. PNL detectives, thanks for the feedback. Keep on working. We are working to make our country a better place. Don't worry about your identity being known. Keep on sending us the information. Enough respect. Now, if you are here watching this video, if you have not yet hit on the like button, remember to hit on it. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, remember, hit on the subscribe button. As also, hit on the notification bell, then click all. So that, as soon as we have uploaded a new video, you will be notified. Now, in the final story for today, you have seen the thumbnail. This incident, it took place at Duckett's Road, in the Cambridge area, in the parish of St. James. It took place Christmas night, Saturday, December 25th, 2021, about 10.30 p.m. Our information is that a man, his name is Otis Barrett. He was popularly known as Wet Up and he lived at Duckett's Road in the Cambridge area in the parish of St. James. Now, here is what we are learning. Wet Up and about five persons, they were at a shop at Duckett's Road. It is said that whilst they were at the shop, loud explosions were heard. As a result, the police were called in. When the police went on the scene, they found a man lying at the side of the shop. This man, he was identified as Otis Barrett. He was popularly known as Wet Up. The other persons, 
who were at the shop with wet up, they were not found. Up until now, we don't know whether or not the police was able to contact them. Wet up, he was found lying face down and he had gunshot wounds to his head and his upper body. He was taken to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where he was pronounced D-E-A-D. -E now, when this crime scene was processed, our information is that 41 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. You hear much we say a while ago? 41 9mm spent shells were recovered from this scene. So, where are the other persons who were there with wet up? We are told that at least three females and a male were there with wet up. Is it possible that they know who shot wet up? Is it one of them who shot wet up? Cambridge people, we don't know exactly what happened. We don't know exactly what took place. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody.